Hello again, brothers and sisters in Christ. It's still Monday, August 31st, and it is 7.04 p.m., and I want to bring to you some words from the Lord that came in a newsletter I get. But this first one is from Bill Burns, and he doesn't contribute all the time like some of the others. And I, and I often feel that Marsha Burns is one worth sharing very much of the time. I don't always, but um, these words, <clears throat> um, not the first one, not necessarily just for the first fruits, but uh, could be for e either. All right, I'll go ahead and read it. He calls it The Trumpet by Bill Burns. I will give you that which you need. I will bring my word into your life with such strength and power that it will become the lens through which you look. And as you view your circumstances and the things that are taking place around you, my lens... Wait a minute, I'm sorry. That things that are taking place around you through my lens, you will have the understanding of which way to go and will have an understanding of what you should do. You will have understanding, for it is by my spirit that I speak to you. It is by my spirit that I lead you, and it is by my spirit that I reveal to you. Does anybody think maybe we need his Holy Spirit in us? Yes, and the more the better. Okay, the last sentence says, My people, those things which you need to know and to do, Wait, that doesn't make sense. Oh, uh, you know what it is. I'm I'm looking at it with uh, thinking commas or periods, and they're not. Here's the bright blue glasses. Okay. All right. Let's back up to you. Will have understanding. For it is by my spirit that I speak to you. It is by my spirit that I lead you. And it is by my spirit that I reveal to you, my people, those things which you need to know and to do, says the Lord. Okay, now that makes sense. And that's how it ends. Okay, so this one is called Small Straws in a Soft Wind by Marsha Burns. And this speaks to me, excuse me, like uh, I think it could be for the first fruits, but it could be for either. The changes that you have endured were and are necessary to prepare the way for that which is to come. There must be an end of the old order before the beginning of the new order. This transition has been in process for quite some time, and now you will begin to see the culmination. Do not Fear, I have been with you in the hard times and in the easy times, and I will be with you as long as you are in me. You see there? Condition. The whole Bible throughout it is, if you do this, then I will do that. So he is saying... I have been with you in the hard times and, and easy times, and I will be with you as long as you are in me. 
So don't turn your back when times get tough if you get left behind. You hang in there and press in even harder. The Lord is sending you help. The first fruits will be along to feed you, get you water, get you well, whatever you need. You cry out to the Lord and he will help you. And with that she put a scripture, 2 Corinthians 5.17 Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Well, that is true of the spirit man when you become born again. But Jesus is talking here about another change, a transition. Think about it. Now, here is one from a lady that doesn't, uh, isn't often in the newsletter. Her name is Victoria Ang. The title is Urgent, Urgent, Calling All My Warriors to Active Duty. Now, she received this August 23rd, 2020 at 9.12 a.m. What are you doing? What are you doing? Do you have to go potty? You go right back over there where you were. His favorite ones are the white ones and the black ones are down right now. He started going under my desk. Don't you do it. You know where to go potty. You hear me? You go potty over there on, on the black. You, you know where to go. And don't interrupt me again. This is important. My children, the spirit realm and the physical realm have come into alignment. The warnings I have sent forth through my prophets and messengers will now start to play out in the physical realm. The battle continues to rage in the heavenly. You poor confused dog. The prayers that have, I'm so sorry, y'all. He's wanting his white, he wants a white pee pee pad. Do I have a picky dog or what? I will start from the beginning. Oh, Jasper, Jasper, what am I going to do with you? Excuse me for one minute. We're almost out of me, Jasper. All right, here you go. Go potty. Go potty. Oh, my goodness. Now we'll see what happens. All right. Let me start over. My children, the spirit realm and the physical realm have come into alignment the warnings I have sent forth through my prophets and messengers will now start to play out in the physical realm. The battle continues to rage in the heavenly. The prayers that have been prayed will start to manifest. Many will start to see them come to pass in their lives. Those that have stayed faithful, those that have not grown weary in the battle, but continued to look to me for answers to prayer and put their belief and trust in me. Okay, that I read it right, it just didn't sound right. Now, this is all caps. Prepare yourselves, for the time has come, my children. The time is now. 
Stand firm, stand tall. Your world as you know it is about to change forever. But those that have put their belief and trust in me know the battle is won. I am coming soon for those that have kept their garments spotless and have stayed in repentance. Keep your eyes focused on me to lead you through the battlefield. I love you with an everlasting love and am right next to you. All right, the scriptures she applied to this was Revelation 12, 7 through 9 in the King James Version. And there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon. And the dragon fought and his angels and prevailed not. Neither was their place found any more in heaven. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. Then also she added Second Corinthians 4.18 While we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen, for the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. That's right, eternal. Ephesians 6, verse 12. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. John 4.24 says, God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Do you realize what that means? In spirit is speaking in speaking in tongues, and in truth is speaking in your native language. You must worship him in spirit and in truth. I'm sure some of you will disagree, but I would like to hear your explanation of how else that could possibly mean. How would you worship him? in spirit and in truth. If spirit was in English and in truth is in English, then what is the first one? Lies versus truth? No, it can't possibly be. There are two different things. You're worshiping him two different ways. You're not lying and then you're telling the truth. It's in spirit and in truth. This is why I keep teaching everybody, if you cannot pray in tongues, at least be begging for it. Be wanting it. Don't be thinking, I don't need that. We do not need that. Don't think that way. You do need it. You are supposed to have it. It is supposed to be the manifestation of being filled with the Holy Spirit. So if you've got everything else but that, you just take it up with the Lord, okay? Don't let it cause you undue fear. You just keep praying for it. The way I keep praying for dreams and visions, messages from the Lord again. I long to hear His voice again. And 
I realize he's communicating with me in different ways, but it's not the same. So I get it. If you really, really, oh, I want a rapture dream so bad, I can hardly stand it. I haven't yet got one. I had a dream that I had a superpower the other night. It was really cool. I could float up to the ceiling and cling to the ceiling like I was Spider-Man. I mean, it was silly. I wasn't saving people, but it was so cool. And I remember, like, it really happened. I could... I was really there, and I felt light as a feather. So it, it was neat, and, and I enjoyed it, and I thought, wow, I had a superpower. That's what we'll have. We're going to have superpowers. It was just a teeny weeny taste of what's coming, and I appreciated it. Well, I'm going to plead the blood of Jesus over this video. And over each and every, and e <laughs> over myself, my computer, um, and my internet connection, my, it was messing up earlier. Yeah, mighty funny. Somehow it just got unplugged. Maybe the dog did it. Yeah, that's it. Anyway, it's possible. Uh, but that's not what's been causing my computer to black out. With no numbers showing. I mean, it's just not supposed to be doing that. I don't understand it. But anyway, so I plead the blood of Jesus over my computer. And over each and every one of you. And your devices. And your internet connections. So with that, I'll say bye for now. I'll talk to you later.